less is more. Less products, less problems. That's what this video is gonna be titled. Less products, less problems. Ah, <gasps> genius! Hi, dolls. Hey, dolls, what's up? And welcome back to the dollhouse. Welcome if this is your first time visiting. Please do consider subscribing. We would love to have you. My name is Z, and I do tons of fun feminine content on this channel. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, please be sure to press the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future uploads. All of my social medias will be sprinkled in the description box below. So now that you dolls know everything you need to know, let's go ahead and hop into the video. Are you tired of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars only to still smell musty, dusty, and rusty? In this video, I'm gonna share with you my tips for how to sell sweet and pretty all day long without spending a lot of coin girl. These tips are gonna be things that brands, influencers, and medical professionals won't say to you because they want you to continue buying products, they want you to continue coming into their office and getting on Accutane, they want you to continue spending your coins to pay their bills. Let's stop playing other people's bills and focus on our own and our own hygiene. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay. First, I want to do a quick disclaimer and let you dolls know that everything that I'm going to be sharing with you dolls in this video is my own personal opinion. This is just what works for me. So take what I say with a grain of salt. I also want you to keep in mind as we go through this video that I have a policy of process over products. So to me, it's not necessarily centered around what products you use, more than how you use your products, how frequently you use them, and your process. And lastly, I wanna let you dolls know that a lot of your hygiene issues stem from your diet, your mental health, your lack of sleep, and your physical health. So those are just a few things that we are gonna be touching on as we go along. So I have been out of a lot of my hygiene products, so I did recently do a hygiene run, so I will be sharing with you dolls a few of my hygiene products that I recently picked up throughout the video. So it's gonna be like a haul, but we're also gonna be sharing tips and tricks as well as we go along. So we're just gonna move right along from top to bottom and we are gonna start out with our hair first. Your hair should not be stinking. It should not be stinking. I have never had stinky hair. I don't know what that is. First thing I wanna say about hair hygiene is your hair is highly affected by the foods that you eat, by how much sleep you get, and also by your mental health. So those are the things you definitely need to focus in on first before buying any products. Keep in mind the products are only topical. They are tools to use to help aid in curing an issue. They are not the cure for the issue. So let's keep, let's go into this video keeping that in mind. Products are tools. I am gonna be sharing with you guys the products that I use, but that is not to product push anything down your throat. This video is not sponsored. I'm not here to make you or get you to buy a product. You can choose any toothpaste you wanna choose, girl. Just make sure you're brushing your teeth, okay? That's, that's what we're gonna get down to at the end of the day. I will, however, be sharing with you guys the products I use because I know I'm going to get tons of questions about them, but I just want you guys to keep this in your mind as we go through the video and I show you products. It's not about the products you use, it's about your process and how you're using the products. Products are only tools, okay? Okay, and also some of these tools can be harmful to your process, so keep that in mind as well. Less is more. Think that in this video. Less products, less problems. That's what this video is gonna be titled. Enough of the rambling. Now this is a very controversial issue because I feel like a lot of people have different processes for their hairs. Considering what type of hair you have and what texture hair you have will determine how frequently you wash your hair. I personally wash my hair every other week. I have dry, coarse hair that tend to break when it's washed a lot. So I don't wash my hair every four days. I hear a lot of girlies saying, you need to wash your hair every four days, it stinks. I I personally have never had an issue with smelly hair. I do, however, have friends that are not African American, that are Caucasian, Asian, and other descents that do complain that their hair gets smelly after uh, three days and that they don't understand how I can like not wash my hair for like a week or to two weeks. If your hair is smelly, it is because you have some type of bacterial buildup in your hair. So this could be from using a bunch of hair products in general, like hairspray, hair creams, 
edge control, gel, those products build up and create bacteria on your scalp that creates that smell. And also it can come from oils as well. I wanna talk about this really quick because I feel like hair oils, right, are really popular and very trending and everyone uses hair oils nowadays. I will honestly tell you guys, I've never had an issue with my hair smelling, but my hair does suck up moisture quite quickly and it does dry out quite quickly. So I think that's why there's not a lot of bacteria forming for there to be any odor. And I get a lot of questions from my Caucasian friends asking me, how can you put so much oil in your hair and your hair not be oily, not stink, not have all that buildup? And it's because the type of texture hair that I have is very dry and it absorbs the oil quite quickly. So you have to think about your type of texture of hair and you have to think about how the oils will be absorbed into your hair. Some textures are not meant for that much oil or they're not meant for that thick of an oil as well, you guys. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that when hair oils first came out and started to get popular, it was released in a certain type of community. It was released in the African American community for women like myself who had super dry hair who struggled to retain length. And a lot of the products that were out there in the store for hair care were not geared towards women of color like myself with textured hair. So a lot of those products were very drying to our hair and it really didn't moisturize our hair. So once we figured that out, we started creating oils for our hair and they started to get popular. And I think when it got popular and it started trending, everyone saw it and everyone said, whoa, I wanna have that same success that those girls are having with their hair. And so everyone, not just the African-American community with textured hair, but all the communities came is like let's put oil in our hair. I also want you guys to keep in mind that the oils were meant for super thick, dry, brittle, textured hair. So if you don't have hair like that, that may be why you're not seeing the same results or it may be why you're having a bunch of issues with product buildup. The oils might be sitting in your scalp or in your hair follicles along with all the other products you're putting in there and your hair isn't absorbing those oils. It's sitting there creating bacteria over time. So, and that's also why your hair is like super greasy and oily because your hair isn't absorbing the oil. So you have to test it out for yourself. You have to put the oil in your hair for yourself and see, does my hair absorb this oil? Is it creating bacteria in my hair that's making it smell or any even other issues that you may have? So I hope that helps and I hope that I was really clear. I'm not at all saying that you have to be a certain race to use hair oil in your hair. I am, however, saying that your hair has to be a certain type and a certain texture to absorb the oils and avoid having bacteria buildup that will lead to smelly odor hair. So since we're on the topic of hair care and oils, I wanna share with you guys some of the hair care products I recently picked up. Now for me, shampooing your hair, it doesn't really matter to me about what type of shampoo I've used. I've used many different types of shampoos over the years and what I've learned is they have very small differences that are so minute, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm constantly switching out my shampoo, you guys. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, process over products. I don't really necessarily think that a certain shampoo will do super wonders for you. I don't think that you know, if I use a certain shampoo, I'm gonna look like the model in the commercial. I don't think that. I think shampoo is meant to clean your hair. As long as it cleans your hair, you're good, girl. You don't have to have all of these different shampoos and products. And also, I want you guys to keep in mind, the more products you use in your routine, the more shock that you cause to your hair. It doesn't matter what shampoo you use, girl. Just make sure that you are washing your hair. So currently, I'm using the Coco Magic Shampoo. I got it from Marshalls and like I said I've used a bunch of tons of different shampoos in the past and to me just making sure I shampoo my hair on a regular basis has been good enough for me also I want to mention that if you really do struggle with a stinky scalp or a dirty scalp like if you have like a lot of flakes or a lot of residue and buildup on your scalp please do consider trying a scalp scrub I used to use I think it was the body shop tea tree 
scalp scrub I think it's the body shop I can't remember what brand but honestly it doesn't really matter like I said it's not about brands you can really honestly go to Target anywhere and get a scalp scrub and scrub your scalp that helped so much I did however stop using a scalp scrub because as you guys just heard me state I do have very dry hair and the scalp scrub started to dry my scalp out a lot and I noticed I started to have flakes so I stopped using a scalp scrub but what I replaced over the scalp scrub was a scalp massager and I gently just massage my scalp and scrub it all of the shampoo down into my scalp and that tend to help a lot more with product buildup again I don't do this very frequently I only do it once in a while when I actually need it because I don't want to shock my scalp I don't want to shock my hair what I've learned with my hair is the less I do to my hair the better my hair did not start growing and getting thick again until after I stopped using a bunch of products and I stopped manipulating it when I stopped relaxing my hair and I stopped hot ironing my hair and I stopped putting a bunch of different from gels and products in my hair and I stopped all of that stuff you guys and stopped shampooing it every week and every day that is when my hair really started to become healthier started to get shinier more moisturized thicker and then I had an issue where it was growing but then I couldn't retain the length now my hair is able to retain length it bounces back it's so much nicer my hair is starting to feel like my hair when I was a young girl and when I was younger my mom only literally only used blue magic hair grease if you know you know and water to style our hair and my hair was down to my butt so mama knows best okay I went back to the blue magic hair grease but this time I couldn't find it in the store so I did go ahead and order a oil now my favorite oils to use again you don't have to choose these oils you don't have to buy these products I'm not pushing these down your throat I'm sharing it with you just in case you guys ask in the comments the oils that I like to use recently have been neem oil I also enjoy rosemary oil but I've used all different types of oil I've used black castor oil I've used lavender oil I've used almond oil I've used so many different types of oil what I will say is if your hair is a lot thinner and fine you're gonna want to go with a lighter oil if you're gonna do oils I would suggest an almond oil or an apricot oil or even a baby oil and honestly you guys it really doesn't matter what type of oil you use as long as you're moisturizing your hair you could use freaking cooking oil if you want to if you have hair like mine that's textured and thick and curly you know who you are girl put some oil on that hair it's gonna do you so much justice but like I said any oil is good I am currently using this Dubar Amla hair oil I just recently picked this up off of Amazon and only because I heard a few people talking about this oil I've only been using this oil for a week and to be completely honest with you guys I've seen the same results of, as I've seen with using my neem oil and also with using the rosemary oil that I've been using so I haven't seen that big of a difference I feel like I have to use it a little bit longer to know but what I will tell you guys is it has a very distinctive smell when I smelt this it smells exactly like blue magic hair grease so I'm hoping that this is the same type of oil this oil is it says it combines the goodness of amla oil which is an Indian gooseberry with a blend of vegetable and mineral oils so like I said y'all y'all can use cooking oil you can use vegetable oil it, I mean as long as you're putting some type of moisturization back into your dry scalp you will be fine yeah so this is the oil that I'm currently using and then the hair cream that I have been using that I just picked up also I need to pick up another bottle and I literally just got this but this is the Cantu guava and ginger uh, hair lotion it has guava ginger jojoba oil and shea butter and it helps retain length this is what I've been using I really love this it's I got it from Burlington for like $3.99 it has really helped my hair with the refining the curls and also I noticed that I'm having less breakage since I've been putting this in my hair and I don't think it's necessarily this product I think it's just the fact that I'm moisturizing my hair a lot more and I also think it's the fact that I've also changed my diet again like I told you guys diet has a lot to do with it drinking more water will definitely affect your hair getting good sleep will definitely affect your hair and also if you're stressed out your hair will fall out girl so get your mental health under control but yeah these are the hair care products I use every once in a while when I want to do like a slick back bun or style my hair I will use this ORS hair edge control but yeah I don't put this on my edges every single day and you guys 
when I come back, if I go out and I use this in my hair, I will wash it out immediately. Kind of going into beauty tips now and less of like hygiene because I feel like hygiene has to do with odor. If you have a super active lifestyle and you feel like your hair is stinky or it's getting dirty and you feel like you have to wash it every two days or four days, I would highly suggest doing a conditioning rinse instead of a wash. Just so you're not putting all of those really rough ingredients into your hair every two to four days. Like guys, that is a lot to put into your hair. I would highly suggest using a conditioning rinse. Um, what I like to do sometimes if I feel like, oh my God, I can't wait another week to wash my hair. I really need to wash it right, right now. What I'll do is I'll just take some conditioner, mix it with water, spritz it in my hair, let it sit, get in the shower and rinse the conditioner out. And I find it, it's a really nice rinse that isn't too hard on my scalp, doesn't really dry out my hair that much, but also it's kind of like a refresher throughout the week without having to put those like dry products like shampoos in your hair and stuff like that also those products can strip your hair which can also cause other issues and then see this is how they get you they just cause issue after issue after issue and then you have to buy another product to repair that and another product to repair the the damage that another product caused it's just let's dumb down so for products in my hair i will tell you guys i try to keep it to a handful of products if it's more than five products that is way too much we really want to be under the three product range so i have a shampoo and conditioner um, I no longer use a scalp scrub, so I knock that out of my routine. I have a moisturizer, which I use hair oil. I'm talking about my natural hair, like obviously my wigs, I use hairspray and stuff like that. But I use a hair oil to style my natural hair. And then I also use um, edge control and a hair cream. Those are the products I use in my hair. And that is washing all the way from washing it to styling it five products no more also i always wash my hair root to tip i don't ever put shampoo on the bottom ends of my hair because my hair is dry like i told you guys i only put it in my scalp even when i shampoo my hair i always just put it in the scalp and then i just rinse it back so all of those soaps and things aren't really being that harsh on the ends of my hair it's really just for me to clarify my scalp and really get out of there because honestly you guys my natural oils like i told you less is more my natural oils in my hair are the best for my hair that's been my experience the more oily my hair is the more i leave my hair alone my hair grows it retains its length it's thick the curls are bouncy there's even less frizz so those are my tips another tip is to cover your hair at night now this is not just for your hair care routine but this is also for your skin if you have products in your hair like oils and things like that and you go to bed those products will get onto your pillow those products will get onto your face and start to break you out i am someone who has very sensitive skin so these products do tend to seep down to my skin and irritate my skin if i do not tie my hair up i highly suggest using a hair scarf with also a silk bonnet and or a silk pillowcase. I also suggest changing out your pillowcases frequently. This will also help reduce bacteria buildup in your scalp and on the items that you're sleeping on. So just be, be conscious of that. Where do you lay your head? Where do you put your head, you know? Your diet is probably the most important thing when it comes to any type of hygiene your diet what you put in your body you will become if you are eating bad your body will respond your body is telling you something is wrong when you have an allergic reaction when you break out that's your body saying you have something going on inside internally that is not right it doesn't mean you go and buy a topical cream and cover it up and band-aid it it means you have to look at your diet and see what what are the things that i'm eating that's making my hair smell like this or what are the things that i'm eating or not eating um, that's making my hair fall out or break off you really have to think about that are there foods that you're eating that's causing scalp buildup are you eating a lot of fried food and all of that grease and oil going to your head and causing scalp buildup you really have to think about that because those are the things that will affect you i promise you if you focus on your diet and your mental health 
and your rest, I promise you, you will not need all of these products that these brands, companies, and physicians and influencers are pushing onto you. So the last two tips that I have for you are to clean your hair tools and clean and wash your hair bonnet. Girl, you need to be washing that hair bonnet. I personally have two. I highly suggest getting three to five bonnets so you can switch them out regularly so you can wash them in your laundry as you go. You definitely need to keep your hair bonnets washed, your pillowcases washed, but also your hair tools. I don't know what it is with us girls, but we like never clean our brushes, never clean our combs, never wipe down our flat irons. We're constantly just using these tools and never cleaning them. All of the bacteria and product buildup that is in those tools are going back into your clean hair. You get into the shower, you wash your hair, you scrub your scalp, you get out, and then you use a comb that's full of nasty old hair and product buildup or a brush, and you comb it and brush it through your hair? Girl, if you don't wash these tools, and I would say wash your tools at least once a week. Forgot to share with you guys a hair tool, a new hair tool that I picked up that I'm gonna try out. You guys will see in a vlog or what I think about it, but it is this uh, Kinky for Curls Soft Waved Hairbrush. I heard great things about this from the Chocolate Babies. They said that this will detangle your hair, like textured curly hair, um, without ripping it out. So I'm really excited to see this and see how this works because I do feel like regular brushes and combs are meant for girls with straight hair. They're not meant for my texture hair because look at the comb lines, they're straight. My hair is not straight. So I'm really excited to try this. I definitely wanna see how this works and I'll let you guys know. And I got this from Burlington if you guys are interested. This was $3.99. Okay, so I hope that covered everything for hair. That was quite a lengthy bit, but I knew hair would be lengthy because it's a few controversial topics thrown in there. The next thing I wanna talk about is face and skin care. That's the next thing from top to bottom. When it comes to skin care, your diet is going to be the main thing that you are going to want to focus on. I personally didn't have bad skin growing up. It wasn't until I hit my 20s that I really started to develop like acne and cystic acne. When I tell you your diet is vital, when it comes to your skincare, you stay away from greasy foods. Stay away from high sugar foods. You, you're gonna hate me. Stay away from dairy. Stay away from gluten. All of those things are things that will you will have allergic reaction to, especially if you consume a lot of it. Your body is not meant to break down those types of things. I think a lot of people, when they think of acne, they don't think about it in a like, allergy way. They think about it as in like, a, oh, I got a cut, let me cover it up. When you have an allergic reaction, like if I eat shellfish, I will start to break out in hives. When you start to think about it like that, you're like, dang it, I started to discover, crap, every time I eat ice cream, I break out. Every time I have milk or cheese, I break out every single time. Then I started to realize my body is saying, those things are not good for me. I can't eat those things. So my body was telling me that you're allergic to this stuff. Uh, when I started to eat sugar, I started to break out. When I cut out sugar, dairy, um, gluten, and oily, greasy foods, that's when I started to see a huge change in my skin. Also, when I started to drink more water, I started to see a huge change in my skin. When I started to get more sleep, my mental health got better and I stopped stressing out and I stopped breaking out. Now I'm not saying that this is for everyone. This is not for everyone. Some people do have really bad issues that need to be medicated with Accutane and all of these other medications that these dermatologists are pushing on y'all. But a lot of these medications also cause other problems. And if you notice a lot of times when you go on these acne medications, these dermatologists don't just give you one acne medication. They give you multiples and they give you topical creams and they give you all this stuff because a lot of those medications have side effects that cause other things. So even though you in your mind is thinking, okay, I'm fixing my acne, you're also causing more issues. They're, the idea is that they get you on a medication and they get you linked to 
a product so that you continue to buy it more and more product more and more medication to continue to pay their bills babe but what i'm telling you is you can fix a lot of this by just changing your diet and your lifestyle make sure you're taking vitamins but don't just take vitamins that everyone else is taking talk to your doctor a little controversial but talk to your doctor and ask what type of vitamins do i need to take a lot of your issues are having to do with gut health consider taking like a probiotic or having some type of probiotic drink but again what has helped me personally is staying away from oily foods sugars foods high in sugar just get rid of sugar altogether y'all sugar is so freaking dangerous sugar can kill you sugar um drinking more water but getting rid of dairy getting rid of things that have gluten in them those are the things you really need to cut out and i promise you you'll see a difference wash your makeup brushes wash your makeup tools okay if you do not want nasty six stick acne on your skin stop using nasty dirty tools clean them brushes get rid of them you should not be keeping and this also goes for hair tools as well you should really not be keeping a brush or a comb for like years like a brush you should be throwing that away you should be switching out your hair tools like every other year like same with makeup brushes you're not supposed to be using a makeup brush the same makeup brush past a year the next tip that i have for you guys is to wash your face in the morning and at night wash your face you can use whatever type of face wash you want obviously if you wear makeup you want to be uh, very conscious about the way you remove that makeup how i remove my makeup is by using baby oil and then i go back in with a cleanser to wash off the re remaining residue but wash your face you guys day and night even if you do not wear makeup that day still wash your face and how i would do that in the morning is i will wash my face with just plain water you guys nothing else i just go into the sink and wash with the lukewarm water you guys i used to do a lengthy morning routine if you guys have seen my hygiene routines in the past and my morning routines in the past i used to have so many products that i was just putting all over my face in the morning girl and i understand on some days you have to put makeup on so you have to put like moisturizer and product on your face to prep for makeup but on days i'm not gonna wear makeup i only wash my face with water i do not put any type of soap or any type of product on there and then at night i have my night routine where i will do a face wash like i told you guys i have very sensitive skin the face wash i currently use is the cetaphil sensitive skin face wash and that's just what works best for me i don't want all those dyes all those chemicals all those fragrances cut that out all of those face wash i could take you guys into my bathroom right now and show you my medicine cabinet is full of beauty care products for my face that I don't even use if you notice they're not the bottles aren't even open they haven't been used because you guys that I realized that the less products I use on my face the better my skin was so now I only do like a skincare routine where I use products at night and I use a hyaluronic acid and I use an oil on my skin to moisturize my skin and on days that I notice that my skin isn't doing too well and it's like kind of dull I'll use a toner and a discoloration correcting serum so I don't use the serum every single day I also don't use toner on my skin every single day you guys toner can be very dangerous to your skin actually and can cause other problems also when you're putting all of these serums and things on your skin sometimes these serums don't mix well together they might do one thing really good and another one might do another thing really good but when mixed together it can create bacteria on the skin that can cause a lot of skin problems can cause breakouts can cause your skin to start to create hives and blisters and all types of irritation issues I know the beauty industry is very popular right now and all of the girlies are obsessed with beauty care skincare and we're buying all the products but you guys Please be conscious of one, your coin in your pocket because you don't need all of those items. And please be conscious of what serums work well together. 
Less is more, you guys. Like I said, washing your face every single day with lukewarm water, keeping your hands clean is also something free that you can do to keep your skin in good condition. If you have long nails like me, I don't usually wear nails this long, y'all. I'm, I'm trying it out. But if you have long nails like myself, keeping your nails clean and not touching your face a lot you guys, your hands are the things that carry the most bacteria on your body. Did you know that? Not your feet, not this. Your hands are the things that carry the most bacteria on your body. Keep them off your face. Keep them clean. If you have long nails, clean underneath your nails. Why do you why am I do you have hot Cheeto residue underneath your nails? That's crazy. I like to use a little eyelash spoolie to just get under with some soap and just get underneath my nails with that. I typically don't keep my nails as long, like I said. Also, keeping your nails clipped and clean, if you have natural nails, are definitely going to help your skin so, so much because there can be nothing worse than putting on all of your serums and all of your topical creams at night with dirty freaking hands and with nasty food stuck under your freaking nails, girl. It's, it's gonna create bacteria, you're going to break out. I exfoliate my skin once a week, so I typically do that with either a face scrub or some type of exfoliating brush, and I still use like a sensitive face scrub or a sensitive wash with the exfoliating brush. So like I said, you guys, even if you exfoliated your skin with just the brush and warm, lukewarm water, you can do that in the morning. Just take a brush, lukewarm water, and just exfoliate your face so like with hair care i'm gonna tell you to dwindle down the amount of products you use on your skin you should really be using no more from one to three products at a time okay and by at a time i mean if you're having a breakout um you're probably going to be using medicated products like a medicated face wash so you're not going to be using your medicated face wash your normal face wash plus this plus that you're just going to be using your normal uh, medicated stuff so you should have like something like that like a medicated face wash a medicated moisturizer and because all you really need you guys is a cleaner and a moisturizer and maybe an exfoliator okay so once you get a cleanser a moisturizer and exfoliator you you can stop you only really need three products dwindle down to three products per process so I have a different process for my skin when I have a breakout I only have breakouts now during my period and immediately when I start to see pimples pop up, I go straight into using my Neutrogena Acne, Grapefruit Acne Wash. And then I'll also use some type of scrub, exfoliating scrub. Now my skin is very sensitive, so I don't use a medicated scrub. I'll use just a regular scrub because I am so sensitive. When I have a breakout, I actually don't use moisturizer because most times I find that moisturizers claw and oils clog my pores when I have a breakout. So I kind of keep want to keep that area dry. So I'll use more of drying products than that, or I won't use an oil on my skin. I'll use like the CeraVe lotion on my skin and that will moisturize my skin without clogging it and not making the pimple worse, if that makes any sense. I forgot to mention this, but I also use this detox face mask whenever I break out with acne. I sometimes treat the acne with this face mask, so that's been really good. And this is the Freeman Beauty Charcoal and Probiotics. And this is my favorite one. I've tried tons of face masks, and this is literally the only one that works. So I buy it in bulk off of Amazon. Also, I have been wanting to try out the um, pimple patches for a while because now that I don't work from home and I go into a job for work I hate going into the job with like a giant pimple on my face so I've just really wanted to try these to cover up the pimple but what I didn't want to do is cover it up and then it create more bacteria and get worse so I thought trying out a pimple patch would be a good idea this is the grace and Stella zit happens and that's cute and it's a hydrocoiloid pimple patch again never tried this before it says it has salicylic acid and tea tree oil to absorb pimple gunk um, to be honest with you guys how I treat my pimples outside of the medicated wash I use just raw natural tea tree oil so when i have breakouts again like i said less is more i probably use less products on my face when i have a breakout than when i 
don't have a breakout. I really do love that, but I'll definitely be sure to let you guys know what this is like. Um, this is the invisible one. I've seen a lot of girlies with the cute rainbows and hearts and smiley faces on their face. And although I think that's cute, I just don't feel like that's fitting for me. So I just wanted to try something clear and invisible that could hide it. And so I got these for like $5. I think it was like four or something on Amazon, which is a really good deal. So I'll let you guys know in a future video what I think about these. I also don't think that you need pimple patches. Like that's a product I definitely don't need. I definitely just got it to try it out because I wanted to see how it worked. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually not a popular topic. I feel like a lot of the hygiene girlies don't really ever talk about it and I don't know why, but clean the ears, you guys. Clean your ears. I know it's kind of controversial. I've done routines before where I've shown myself doing the process of cleaning my ears and I've gotten tons of comments saying that is not healthy for your ears. It's really not, uns it's really unsafe. What ear wax is there to protect your ear and all those things. And I do understand that you guys, the ear wax down in your ears are there to protect like things from getting down into your ears. But when you have ear wax oozing out of your ear, hun, and if you have earwax like all the way up here and I can see the earwax out of your ear from standing across from you, that is an excessive amount of earwax. You don't need that much earwax. And if you are really nervous about cleaning your ears, I highly suggest going to see a professional who can clean your ears for you. You can go and have a procedure where you get your ears properly cleaned in a way where you can feel comfortable. But just not cleaning your ears, babe, is not an option for me. I'm sorry if you guys disagree with me, but you need, if I can see the earwax, you need to clean your ears. You should have earwax down in your ears that I cannot see. Also, a lot of people wash their entire faces, don't clean the inside of their ears, and don't wash behind their ears. Why take that washcloth and scrub behind your ears, babe? Because there are little small parts on your body that create odor and bacteria. And the backs of your ears, y'all y'all ain't never smelt a cheesy ear? Like the back smelts the back of somebody's ear and been like, dang, it's cheesy. It's funky. I have. When you start getting up close and personal with people and you start making out with people and you start, what the heck, what is that smell behind your ear? So girl, especially girls, I understand men having these issues, but not really. But especially if you're a girl, like there's no reason why the back of your ear should smell like that, like smell cheesy. Uh, okay, so next I wanted to let you guys know when moisturizing your face Just be sure to moisturize your neck as well and also make sure you clean your neck I feel like a lot of people skip this I feel like a lot of people get in the shower wash their whole body get out do their whole face and just ignore their neck altogether Girl your neck sweats too Girl if you don't wash that neck and that degligé and moisturize your neck and your degligé baby Also the oil that I love to use by the way on my face is the Moderma oil. I get it from Walmart. Um, but again, if you have oily skin, then you are naturally moisturized, babe. <laughs> like you're naturally moisturized. You don't have to buy a moisturizer like the rest of us do. So the next thing I wanna talk about is oral hygiene. I love oral hygiene. It's probably one of my favorite routines to actually do is to take care of my teeth. I am just a teeth girly. I love teeth. I like them to be clean. I like breasts to smell good. I like lips to look juicy and plump. I like gums to be healthy. I like, I care about my mouth, you guys. If your breath stinks, it is because of your gut health. Your breath smelling is not from anything inside of your mouth, you guys. I mean, it can, but after a few hours of eating something, it should honestly go away. Obviously, brushing your teeth twice a day is a great practice, but prioritizing your gut health is really what's going to help you with ending that bad breath. Talk to your doctors, you guys. Let them know I'm having a really bad issue with my breath and I know it's my gut. Can you, what, what do you think I can do? What are some vitamins I can take? What are some foods I can avoid? Also, I highly suggest trying a probiotic. Like I told you guys, probiotics have helped me with my gut. Also, it's really important that you switch out your toothbrush, you guys. If you've had the same toothbrush for three plus years, you probably got a lot of bacteria in your mouth and all over your toothbrush at this point. You really need to switch it out. Also, where you store your toothbrush 
brush is really important as well. If your bathroom sink is in the same space as your toilet, make sure you put your toilet seat down whenever you flush the toilet because the bacteria from your toilet seat can get onto your toothbrush and cause a lot of problems in your mouth. Definitely make sure you are cleaning and storing your toothbrush away in a safe, dry area away from all types of opportunities to get toxin and bacteria. Also make sure you switch them out regularly to reduce the opportunity for bacteria growth. The next tip I have for you guys is to floss regularly. I mean obviously we all know this, the dentist tells us this, but do we actually do it? I don't think we do. I don't know how many people I can count on my hand that actually love flossing. Like nobody wants to do it. It's the chore and the task that we all freaking hate, but it has to be done you guys, because if you don't floss, that food can stick in between your teeth and get caught and create all types of bacteria that can lead to uh, oral infections like abscesses and all types of things that also can create odor as well in your mouth. But I think it is a great practice to just floss every single time you brush. I also carry floss picks in my bag when I know I'm gonna go out to eat and because that way if anything gets stuck in my teeth at the time I'm already flossing it out as I go and I don't have to wait until it's at night and I have all this gunk in there and now I'm trying to clean it. So I highly suggest flossing. I do know that there is a lot of water floss picks out there. I myself have not tried any. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments below if that's something you enjoy and it, how well it works. I just feel like how is water going to get it out of my teeth, but maybe I need to try it out. I also thought of getting a water pick and putting mouthwash in the water pick or baking soda in the water pick and putting that through my uh, teeth as like a floss to see how that works. But in any case, however you wanna do it, just make sure that you are flossing your teeth. You do definitely wanna make sure that you are cleaning your tongue. A lot of people brush their teeth and they do not clean their tongue. Something that I use is a tongue scraper. Um, you don't necessarily have to use a tongue scraper. You can use your toothbrush to brush your tongue if you like. Um, but I, I use a tongue scraper, so I highly suggest just cleaning and brushing your tongue and using a mouthwash, of course. Now, my favorite mouthwash is the Crest 3D White Glamorous White Mouthwash because you guys know I love keeping my teeth looking crisp, shiny, and white. And that is the mouthwash that I find works best with my routine and my toothpaste to keep my teeth white. However, it's not necessarily the best for my gums. I noticed that when I was using that mouthwash, it started to rip up my gums and my gums started to bleed a lot and started to to look a little discolored. Um, and so I, I thought, you know what, maybe I need to get some type of mouthwash that focuses on the gums. So I did go ahead and pick up this Listerine Clinical Solutions. I think this is new. This is the gum health one. And it's so cute, you guys, because it's pink. But I'm so happy to try this out. I never really focused on my gums. I was always much more of a, an aesthetic girl. So I wanted to make sure my teeth were white and they were straight. But I never thought that hey girl, pay attention to your gums. Your gums also, you guys, will tell you a lot about your diet as well. If you aren't eating healthy and you notice your gums starting to get discolored, it's because of something in your diet as well, so pay attention to that. So I switched out my diet. Since I'm gonna use mouthwash, I thought I might as well focus on my gums right now. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. It's awfully cute. I hope it does help. So on that topic, I did pick up some more of my favorite toothpaste. This is the Crest 3D White glamorous white you guys it has to say glamorous white if it doesn't say glamorous white it's not it's i can't get it i've tried so many toothpaste and this is the only one that actually makes my teeth white without making it sensitive this is the toothpaste i love last thing for oral make sure that you are brushing behind your teeth because some of y'all you know who you are. You're just brushing the front. You got to get behind. You got to get all the way back in there. So, so that's all I'm going to say. You're, you know who you are because the dentist told you a million times and you didn't listen. So the next topic we're going to discuss is body care. So we're going to talk all about how to keep your body smelling sweet and pretty. If you have body odor, it is because one or two things. You are not washing regularly, you have a horrible diet, or you have some type of illness, some type of illness that's causing odor. Now let's talk about the different areas of the body that have odor, right? So let's start off at the top 
with our underarm. Okay, so this is the deodorant, the natural deodorant I use. There's no aluminum, no alcohol, no parents, dyes, or artificial fragrances. It's an all natural deodorant. This is the Humble deodorant in Moroccan Rose. I've had the lavender one and a few of the other ones, and this works wonders for me. This is the only natural deodorant that actually does the job, you guys. One of the things I'm gonna say that's gonna be kind of controversial is you don't need to wear a deodorant all of the time. Just hear me out, okay? You don't need to wear it all of the time. I'm one of those people where I had the habit of I would take a shower before bed and put deodorant on. Why am I putting deodorant on after I just took a shower to go to bed? And then I would wake up the next day and I would notice that I was sweaty. I literally just took a shower last night and I wake up the next day and I'm sweaty and smelling. It doesn't make any sense. I even put deodorant on. It wasn't until I stopped putting deodorant on at night before I went to bed and stopped putting deodorant on every time right after I took a shower that I noticed that the odor started to clear up. It was enough for me to just exfoliate my underarms, pat them dry and go to bed and wake up the next morning not sweaty. I know that the deodorant was causing bacteria underneath my arm and I tested it out for a few days because I just wanted to see, I was like, wait a second, uh-uh. So you're telling me all I have to do is exfoliate my underarms and wash and on a regular basis and I don't really, I don't really need to use a deodorant that much. I'm not saying all the time because I would get up in the morning and put deodorant on. Obviously I was gonna be around people, so I needed to wear deodorant just to protect myself as a protective measure. Like I said, less is more. The less deodorant I used, the less bacteria I had, the less smelly I was, the less sweaty I was. And I started to realize the deodorant is causing that and that makes sense. It'll keep me dry and smelling good for four hours and then it would just stop working because it's meant to do that. Why? So that we can continue to buy it. We're like, oh, it worked, it lasted for four hours, but then it made me smelly after that. If I hadn't worn that deodorant at all, I and I tested it. One day I said, I'm not gonna wear deodorant at all. I'm just gonna exfoliate my underarms and I'm gonna wash and that's it. I stayed at home all day that day, you guys. It didn't smell like anything, smelled fresh as a baby. Well, babies aren't really that fresh, but I smell fresh. Overusing the deodorant can clog your pores and it can also create bacteria, so be careful of that. Exfoliating your underarms will also help with getting rid of odor as well. So I use a, a scrub underneath my underarms, but you, I also have like an exfoliating pad that I can use as well underneath my underarms. And as long as you're taking a shower or bathing, like you really shouldn't have a problem with odor. If you're taking a shower and bathing every single day and you still smell, obviously, it depends on your lifestyle if you're super active and you go work out and stuff you need to take a shower after you get back from the gym babe you need to take a shower you should be able to skip a day without wearing a deodorant and be fine if you can't skip a day you need to check your deodorant see what type of ingredients are in your deodorant that may be causing you to sweat and causing bacteria underneath your arm that's causing you to stink Okay. Also, uh, a natural deodorizer is baking soda. You can put baking soda under your arms. Try that for a week. Another part of the body that I feel like a lot of people ignore but does have and can have an odor is your belly button. A lot of people don't clean their belly buttons. Like a lot of people just wash their bodies and get out. Please clean your belly button. And one of the ways you can do that, or I'll tell you the way I do for mine, is I use a Q-tip and I use oil like a natural baby oil and I'll go in there and loosen it up like if you look in your belly button I promise you you will see gunk in there um, and I just clear out any gunk that might be in there and then I'll get in a shower and then I will completely scrub and wash off or you can take like some soap I highly suggest just cleaning it with like oil like a cleansing oil um, or even tea tree oil to clean it and then just getting in the shower and washing it off. Also, if you are a girl, I'm gonna tell you girls, you need to bathe, not just take a shower. I know a lot of the apartments these days only have showers, they don't come with a tub. You need to find a tub, babe. You need to go over your friend's house, somebody's house, you need to take a, sh a bath. You have to soak your skin. You have to get all of that dead skin off of you. A lot of times, odor and even things like 
dirt or things that seem dirty can be just dry, dead skin on your body. You really need to get that off and soaking in a bath before you take a shower really will help. I did get comments on my last hygiene routine saying that I should take a bath after the shower. The complaint was that you get into the bathtub, if you soak first, then you're sitting in your own filth. And if you shower first, then you can get into the tub and soak clean. And I did try that, you guys. And I think it's a good thing to do if you are viewing a bath like an activity, right? So the issue I have with that is the point of getting into the bath is so you can exfoliate, so you can soak, so that dead skin can soak up and come off of you. Yes, you're sitting in your filth as it comes up, but then you go and you take a shower and you clean off all of the filth and all of the stuff that's soaked up. But I find it very hard to believe that you are taking a shower and then hopping into the bath and you're supposedly clean and none of that dead skin or filth is coming into the water. It definitely is, you guys. And also keep in mind, men have external parts. We have internal parts so you definitely want to make sure you're soaking and cleaning um not too long and i wouldn't put a lot of products in the bath water i would just do a plain water and that's just my process that works best for me popping in with another little tip i forgot to add make sure that you are changing out your loofahs and your body brushes regularly so you guys can see look at how look at how dirty this body brush is it's time for her to go yeah i'm gonna take her out because we're gonna get rid of her um sometimes i'll use these to like scrub the tub and stuff like that when i'm cleaning but i'm gonna get rid of this one we definitely need a new body brush look at all of the dirt and dead skin that's stuck in there and i'm pretty sure i need to switch out this loofah that one's new this one i've been using for almost a month now so i need to get rid of that i also want to talk to you dolls a little bit about scent layering to keep your body smelling pretty and fresh. This is definitely not something that you have to do at all. It's just something I like to do because I love fragrances and I'm into smelling good. <laughs> so these are my tips and my tricks. After I exfoliate and I wash, I will start to scent layer. And what I will scent layer with is a scented body wash, which by the way, check with your gynecologist before using any of this scented body washes or anything like that um, because this stuff is not good for your body. You shouldn't be using this all the time. This is if I'm gonna go out and I really wanna make sure that I smell good all day long. I will use a fragranted body wash, like something from Bath & Body Works, and then I will go in after I get out of the shower and I will use my moisturizer, cocoa butter oil that is coconut scented. It smells, you guys, like freaking coconut butter cake, I kid you not, it smells so good. I will moisturize my body with that and then I will put a scented lotion on, so a fragranted lotion, like a Bath & Body Works lotion. And then after that, I will layer my body with a body spray and then after that, I will put perfume on top of that. So I know, <laughs> I know that that's doing the most and a lot of those products that I'm using like perfumes and lotions with fragrances and they are not healthy for your skin and you don't need to do that. You can simply do a simple version of that by just putting on a fragranted oil. That way you moisturize your body and you also get fragranced as well. And I find that fragrance oils last longer on your skin than perfumes and lotions and body sprays do anyway. So I am gonna be switching up my routine and adding some fragrance oils, but I highly suggest just using a fragrance oil over all this stuff. But I did wanna tell you guys my process for how I do it. I am the most, um, but yeah. Here's another big one. Wash your sheets regularly. Okay, you should really be washing your sheets once a week. And also if you're someone who casually dates and you have people, different people in and out of your bed, you're gonna wanna wash those sheets every single time because different bodies carry different types of odors. And once those things are into your sheets, that person might be long and gone. You probably won't ever see them again, but their body odors, their oils, all of that is still in your sheets creating bacteria. So one of the things I like to do is just switch the sheets out, girl, but make sure you wash your sheets regularly. Even if it's just you sleeping in your bed, you still produce oils, you still produce body odor, you still produce bacteria. You definitely wanna make sure that you are washing your sheets regularly and also switching them out 
Switching them out is so important. You should be getting sh new sheets every so often. This will definitely help with your hygiene, I promise you guys. I actually, you guys have seen my room before. I actually have bed sheets that are on my bed and bedding that's on my bed that I actually don't sleep in. And then when I sleep at night, I have a separate sleeping blanket, a comforter, a separate set of sheets, and I also have separate pillows. So at night, all of this stuff comes down off the bed, <laughs> a new blanket with new sheets, and a new pillow goes up over this. So I just wanted to explain that to you guys. Like I switch out my sheets that I sleep in and my bedding all of the time and it's a good tip for just keeping you fresh and clean okay so the next thing i have that has helped me is to use non-scented hypoallergenic detergent you guys you don't want your detergent and the scent from your detergent even if it is gain i, I love the scent of gain but i don't want to smell like gain and the game scent and the scent of the detergent might not mix well with your body chemistry so I smell people who smell like gain and sweat. And I'm like, oh, that's the worst smell I've ever smelled. They smell like sweaty laundry. And it's because the detergent and the scent from that detergent is not mixing well with their body chemistry. So using a non-scented detergent and a hypoallergenic one is much better for your skin and also your hygiene. So please do take that into consideration as well. And of course, just like all of the other topics I covered, you're definitely going to wanna make sure that your diet is in check. If you have a good diet, you drink a lot of water, you're getting plenty of rest, your mental health is in check, I promise you these issues with odor will decrease. Okay doll, so now we're gonna go on to the next topic and I'm gonna try to be very brief on this topic. We're gonna be talking about the cookie and how to protect the cookie and how to keep her smelling fresh and clean. Um, and I'm gonna try to be very brief. Uh, I had an issue a while back with the cookie and it was it didn't make a lot of sense because at the time I was having issues with the cookie I wasn't sexually active I was showering once to twice a day because I was going on a bunch of dance auditions so I had to shower multiple times a day um, and I was using a lot of douches I was using a lot of vaginal washes I was just using a lot I was also waxing and shaving down there and just doing a lot of trauma causing a lot of trauma to my girl i didn't realize the odor issues that i was having was coming from me doing all of those things it was like the more i douched the more i washed the more i kept myself clean the more odor problems I had. And it wasn't until I went to see my gynecologist that I said, girl, there's something, this, I, I'm not even sexually active. Like, there's something wrong, like something is off. She's like, are you using soap down here? I was like, yeah, well, I douche and I use vaginal wash. And she's like, I'm gonna ask you not to put anything down there but water. You are literally cleaning the bacteria out of her. There is a good bacteria, you guys, and a bad bacteria. I did not know that. So the good bacteria is the bacteria that's in your body that helps keep it healthy. If you go in with soap and you clean all the good bacteria out of your body, your body won't be healthy anymore, so it'll produce another type of bacteria that will cause odor. So I was told, and you should talk to your own gynecologist, do not take my advice, but my gynecologist told me to never put anything down there outside of water when I wash. So no soaps, no vaginal washes, no douches, none of that. Do not use any of that but water. She said, get a go to Home Depot if you don't have one in your apartment, invest into a shower spray, like a shower head spray, and just spray water up there, um, or soak in a bath and then rinse off in the shower. But do not put anything up there. It is cleaning out all of the good bacteria and creating bad bacteria that's creating an odor. Once I stopped using vaginal washes, douching, uh, also she said be careful with causing trauma down there with a lot of waxing. I stopped waxing. Those products from wax can cause bacteria and odor. I stopped doing that. And I started to let my girl, like I let the fairy forest grow. Like I have a cute little fairy forest down there. I let the fairy forest grow and I stopped using all of those products down there, you guys, and I stopped traumatizing my cookie and my cookie smells good all the time. I have not had a problem since that day. Since I stopped that, 
I have not had any problems at all down there. She's been in top shape and top condition. You guys know I have a fairy forest down there. She's so cute. And I do, however, keep her trimmed. I don't let her grow wild, okay? She can't grow wild. So I have been using this moisturizing gel shaving gel i don't necessarily think you need to shave down there if you don't want to like you can go natural if you like when i put my underwear on i don't want to see any of the fairy leaves poking out so i just like to do like a little trim um so i shave with this the shaving cream i use it's a generic brand i also use like a nair bikini uh hair removal when i want to go to the beach and things like that just my preference for hygiene i do however have a process for when I have my period, right? Because it's a little bit different than the everyday care for the cookie than when you have your period, right? So for me, I stopped using tampons. Tampons was causing a lot of odor and bacteria buildup. When I stopped using tampons, a lot of my issues went away. I do use pads, which are a little bit messy, but I change them out very, very frequently. The pads I use are these ultra thin pads. I am not a stickler for a certain type of brand. I used to use Always, then I used to use Playtex, then I used to, it really doesn't matter to me. A pad is a pad, it's a sanitary pad. It's going in the trash at the end of the day. So the ones that I have been recently using are the extra long, extra thin pads from Amazon. I just order these when I order my groceries is so much more convenient than running to Target and searching for a certain brand. I mean, it's a sanitary napkin, you guys. You're fine. I also have a douche cup, or not a douche cup, but I also have a diva cup. I don't really use that one as much because I feel like it's not very sanitary. If you're gonna be at home all day, it's good for that. But if you're gonna be out and about, you have to be able to change the cup. And I, it's, it's really hard and not that sanitary for me. So I just use pads, you guys. And then I also use these. These are my favorite panty liners. These are the carefree panty liners. And I got these from Target. If you are a gym girly, I highly suggest using panty liners to protect yourself at the gym. You have to imagine, you guys, a lot of these people are sitting on this equipment all day, sweating on it all day. You don't know what types of bacteria, what types of infections, what people have. As a way to protect yourself at the gym, I love just putting a panty liner in between my gym clothes and the equipment because it just will protect you from any residue. Also, wipe down the gym machines too. When you guys use them, before and after you use, it's common sense, but I see a lot of people walk away from an equipment and don't wipe it down. Wipe it down before and after, but also wearing these will just protect the cookie so much more. So I did want to throw that in there. And then I also use uh, booty wipes, butt wipes, you guys. And I don't just use these on my period. I use these all the time. So that's another tip for you guys. If you're not using butt wipes to clean after you do number two, if you're a man and a woman, and if you have a period and you're not using these, I don't, there's your odor. There's your smelly issues right there. You have to use these, I'm telling you guys. Yeah, for my period, I do however use a sensitive wash, but I don't use it to clean inside of the cookie at all. I use it in between my lips, like on the outside of my thighs, and I also use it to kind of shampoo my fairy forest down there. And then after that, that's it. I might also use it um, in my um, peach cheeks in the back, but that's pretty much it. Nothing goes into my girl, okay? Everything is exterior. So that is what I, oh, and by the way, the vaginal wash that I use is the Honey Pot Sensitive Foamy Wash. And actually, you guys, I don't think it's something you need to have. I think you can honestly just use soap and water if you have a fairy forest and you can use soap and water to clean in between your thigh and your butt. I don't really necessarily think you need the honey pot unless you're a super sensitive person like me and putting soap anywhere near there kind of irritates you then i would suggest using it but it is quite expensive i do think it's worth it but i also think it's unnecessary if that makes any sense however on my period it is a must for me because i do have a fairy forest and we do not need any strawberry sauce 
getting stuck and dried in my fairy forest, if you know what I mean. So using that sensitive wash to kind of clean up my fairy forest is a good idea. Now, if you're a bald girly and you don't have a fairy forest, I really don't think you need it at all. Um, but I have a fairy forest, so that's what I use it for. I will also let you guys know, make sure that whatever butt wipes you get have no added dyes and fragrances in it because that will cause irritation. I remember using other wipes in the past that was causing some problems down there. So just make sure it's fragranted free, non-scented. Same thing with the pads as well. I used to use fragranted pads and it used to irritate me. So if you're sensitive like me, just to avoid all issues, fragrance free and dye free will really help you just to avoid all issues. So lastly, if you aren't sure how to clean your cookie, please consult your gynecologist who will tell you the proper way to clean your cookie. And I think that that will be very helpful. Obviously I can't get into that on YouTube because I don't want to be demonetized. A few other things, if you are someone who uses adult toys, if you like to play, um, make sure that you are cleaning your adult toys before and after your use because those toys do collect bacteria, dust, and all types of things. And if you're not cleaning them before and after, it could cause a bacterial infection in your cookie. So just be conscious of that. This also goes for human to human contact as well. Make sure that the person is clean. Um, also make sure you clean yourself before and you clean yourself after. Yeah. Switch out your underwear regularly. Did you know that every six months to a year, you're actually supposed to get rid of all of your underwear? I'm not talking about the lingerie stuff. I'm not talking about the cute stuff you put on for your, your partner. I'm talking about the panties and the underwear that you are wearing on a daily, weekly, annual basis. You are supposed to be throwing away all of it every six months to a year. If you have underwear past six months, you need to buy new underwear and get rid of the old underwear. Washing it is not enough. Just like with washing the sheets, like I told you guys earlier, is not enough. And washing the towels are not enough. At a certain point, you have to switch out your towels, switch out your sheets, switch out your pillowcases, switch out your underwear, switch it out, switch out your hair combs, switch out your brushes, switch out your makeup brushes. Switch it out, you guys. And I promise you, your hygiene will elevate so much more, you guys. They're not gonna tell you this. Lastly on the list is foot care, you guys. I did have a moment in my dance career where I struggled with foot odor a lot. And it was when I had first moved to LA, I was auditioning a lot. This was before I like quit dance and was like, I'm not gonna be a professional dancer anymore. I was auditioning a lot. I had multiple auditions in a day. And when I wasn't in an audition, I was in a class. When I wasn't in a class, I was in a rehearsal. When I wasn't in a rehearsal, I was teaching. It was like this back to back of me wearing dance shoes that we sweat in building bacteria that caused me to certainly have foot odor that I had never had in my life. And one of the things that really helped me was exfoliating my feet with a detox salt scrub. Girl, invest into a foot bath, even if you just soak your feet in plain water. I did have a moment where I struggled a little bit with more of like a sweaty foot situation than a smelly foot. What I did to rid myself of it was I would just pour the salt at the bottom of the tub and soak my feet in it. And when I tell you the amount of gunk that came up in that tub. I also sometimes like to add a little bit of tea tree oil for an extra scent or maybe a little bit of lavender oil just for an extra scent. And then if you really can't get rid of the odor at that point, I highly suggest using baking soda on your feet, putting it in your socks. Any shoes that you use that have sweat in them a lot, use baking soda in them. That's a natural, like I told you, a natural detox. You can also put baking soda in your foot soak as well. So every other week I do my hair, wash my hair. So every other week I also do a foot soak as well. So they match up so I don't forget to do the feet. Um, Cause I feel like a lot of people forget about the feet. Like they just don't take care of them. Like, especially if they don't have any really big odor problems, they just kind of ignore them. But I feel like it is a hygiene thing that does need to be focused on. You definitely want to make sure you're clipping your nails. I just recently picked up this nail clipper set and I'm excited to try it out. I got this for my pedicures and this has a curved edge so it's easy for cutting and it's a lot more safer than doing like a straight edge blade. And this one is made with wheat straw. It's clean, it's eco-friendly. And yeah, I think I've shown you guys this in a haul already, but this one I picked up at Burlington. It's by the brand My Beauty Spot 
and it was only four dollars for two a nail clipper and a toenail clipper and this one's really cute it's pink it also has a little cute holder definitely want to make sure that you're pushing back your cuticles adding oil to your cuticles cleaning underneath the nails like I treat I try to treat my feet like my hands which is crazy because I feel like my feet do about as much work as my hands do especially if you're a dancer try to treat your feet how you treat your hands if you go to the nail salon every week girl you should be doing the same thing to your feet um, I highly suggest if you have the coins for it getting a pedicure but like I said you guys don't really have to do that you can really paint your toenails at home for like a five dollar nail polish so I highly suggest doing that exfoliate your feet scrub the dead skin off your feet let them soak just how you do when you take a bath and you do it with your body do the same thing with your feet let your feet soak in that bath then exfoliate all that dead skin off and then rinse your feet also use a moisturizer on your feet but nothing like a thick oil if you have dry feet then yeah you might need to use a thicker oil but if you don't have dry feet and you struggle with sweaty smelly feet i highly suggest using just like a little bit of tea tree oil in your foot soak and then leaving your feet alone because you already have oily feet you don't need to moisturize if, you, if that makes sense. So uh, that is it dolls. That was my long extensive hygiene routine plus a haul for you guys. I hope this video was very helpful. Please do leave your comments, suggestions, concerns, questions below. I would love to chat with you dolls down there. Again, keep in mind all of the tips that I'm giving you guys is not to push products. You do not need all of these abundance amount of products. It is about creating a healthy habits, having a healthy process, and having a healthy diet. It. just being healthy in general eternally this is a lifestyle if you want to smell pretty all day long every day you have to change your lifestyle and your process and this is a way to do that you guys I love you I enjoyed making this video and I hope this was helpful please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and I will see you dollies in the next video bye bye dolls okay wait let me get it together let me get it Together. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys all of my guys today I'm gonna to be sharing with you girls all of my tips and tricks for how to keep your hygiene hot wait wait what am I saying cut 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 also I recently went and did a oh my god car in the background